Do you miss the good old days of classic Call of Duty zombies blasting at those rotten, flesh harvering monsters on the 360? You know, playing that late night with friends, because I do. God, that was such a magical time for all of us thinking back and it makes me super nostalgic. But we really don't have any experiences like that anymore, or they're few and far between. That era of cult action horror titles is gone, for the most part. The endless hordes of undead, upgrading those insane weapons, finding cool easter eggs in every nook and cranny, all while traversing those dangerous maps. Even now I can remember the layout of Moon or Keto, those muscle memory fibres kick in for nostalgia, trust me. Also, let's not forget arguing with friends over who buys the next door. Endless arguments there. Well, it's time for something reminiscent of that game and era, but in 2024. Scare Ritual releases today across all major platforms, with some having crossplay. Rip Sony. And while I don't normally showcase games in this way in like a review style almost, I do like to give props to games I'm excited for and talk, want to talk about and that I have some kind of faith in. So let's dive more into this video. I have kept my eye on Wales Interactive and the development of its sequel to Made of Skier for a while. And why this might be a new contender to bring back some of that nostalgia with a fresh, vibrant injection of their own franchise's DNA. Wales Interactive, the developers and publishers of Scare Ritual, are a team, and they have a dozen passionate people bringing us this classic but fresh treat. Back in 2022, I visited EGX and met some of the team in person and gave Scare Ritual a try on the shop floor as such. I was immediately impressed with how fun it was, even given its early access stage. I grabbed it on Steam and have dropped in and out of gameplay sessions as they took on the fan feedback and the suggestions and new weapons and new maps ever since. I can honestly say they're good people, but let's discuss the game more. She is trying to use the radio transmitter to broadcast her message. She calls it her siren song. People hear it and, and they fall under her spell. I must warn you, it is not only the quiet ones that she controls. She has been experimenting. Scare Ritual is a sequel to Made of Scare. Now this is distancing itself from made survival horror aspects into a wave-based action extravaganza with horror elements, akin to the likes of COD Zombies like I've mentioned, but still packing passive story beats, objectives, easter eggs and lore into the horror franchise they are known best for. The horde based game or zombies formula is an older concept many devs never seem to capitalise on in a lucrative way outside of Call of Duty. Sure, there has been contenders in the past, but nothing concrete to stand up against the original great. Well, with Scare Ritual, I think we might have a real chance at revitalising this genre. Scare Ritual is one of those games in which its gameplay appears simplistic, but there is a vast number of moving parts going on behind the scenes. Or simply, when you get used to them, you may miss it. Whether you jump into a quick play match for teams, or a private game with friends, or you just go on full Rambo mode in a solo game, which is, tends to be what I do, it's extremely well balanced, surprisingly, uh, with various difficulties for those sadists among you as well. Even being able to change this on the fly in-game with like a sword in the stone type mechanic, which I do appreciate that you can change this to be a coward, or, like I said, sadist. What helps you feel this difficulty is each enemy feels unique. They have different tactics, different abilities, different ways of attacking you, different visual styles. Some bosses and elites will hunt you to their last breath as well. Each location and map feels eerie and unique, meticulously designed to feed the player into new areas and fun ways to backtrack as well. To be clear, we have about four maps as of now. Depending on the success of the game, I'm sure that the devs will work on more. There was one at launch, and over the last year or so, they've come and, you know, with updates via Steam. However, 
It is clear to see a lot of attention and detail has been adapted here. It has nuances to its structure and exploration I appreciate greatly. Such as ways to get the easter egg weapons, lore tidbits or complete missions in each map. You'll even see notes drop for the lore that you can read. In many ways this is far superior than what we see with the likes of Call of Duty Zombies from the decade prior. Looking at you in Modern Warfare and Cold War especially. Within Scare Ritual we have many improvements on that formula that add to the experience and help you in the action no matter what. For example, in its first map, the Cursed Lands of Lavenrock, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, there was a good location here, it was a good solid start point from the early access, but now like I said we've got more maps. Now I was testing this on and off, diving into the others, you know, generally for experimenting, and the map itself is hugely impressive in scale and scope. I got lost in every single round and that made me feel a weird sense of joy, anxiety and wonder. Not knowing where to go, what to do, nothing felt too closed in or linear, it felt like I could go in multiple different ways and get lost and not worry about it. And that is something I've missed since the Black Op days. I think we all remember 5, that was my personal map, um, I loved that. Now there is countless objectives and missions to take part in as well, as well as trials going on that randomly seem to spawn massive elites that came to like slap my ass, but yeah. There's loads of random things going on here, and the objectives are there for you completionists as well. Now this is one of the betterments over its source material in my opinion. Obviously the easter eggs are still hidden for you to discover, but the main tasks are laid out bare for you to know easily what to do in a group or solo. Whether you choose to do it or ignore it and go to round 100, that's up to you. Now, giving the player this agency and choice is something I really do appreciate. As someone who cannot afford to spend 12 hours a day playing the same game to uncover the final boss or secret boss or ending rooms or easter eggs, sometimes you want to spend the whole day playing the game, sometimes you just want to kind of be given a hand. And it's all there for you, and the community is great as well. They've all fed in to find these easter eggs. So get involved with their Discord, honestly, I've been in it. I know this sounds like a sponsorship of some kind, and you know, in terms of a key being given, yes it is, but I honestly cannot rate this game and the community enough. The game has plenty of value to its replay as well. Like, the replayability here will easily, you know, the cost of entry is £20, and I think that's more than enough for what you get. I think any more would be pushing it. It was a bit cheaper in early access, but for PS5, where I'm playing it for this video, £20 is your entry. And it's a fair, like, indie AA market price. Especially when you've got Ubisoft pushing things like £130 for a new Star Wars game. Other improvements and additions to Scare Ritual is the use of miracles, which are Bioshock-like power-ups that let you fight back with supernatural infused abilities and weapons and little perks. From lightning bolt melee to frost whirlwinds and powerful dragon infused molotovs, there is something here for everyone in this magical system. Also, let's just appreciate the art direction here, and this game has. The particle effects are great, the fidelity is great. The talent is clear here and it just shows that AAA doesn't always mean that all the best people are involved with the bigger studios. However, don't expect to be mending the walls, fences or barricades like COD. You will not be doing that. That's back in the zombie days. In Scare, you're simply watching the entry points, spraying and praying. Now, whether you like that or not, that is the largest change to its core loop here, you will see. Graphically, it feels as if there's a clear intention to make this adaptable for last-gen PS4 and current-gen PS5. Obviously this was coming out on Steam and there was some delays so there is some kind of middle ground here for the visuals. It's not the most outstanding thing but it's got a clear stylized, I guess, aesthetic to it. And the lighting definitely forgives it. In terms of some of the less stellar textures at times, the darkness really helps sell it with the lighting. Nevertheless, it's always important to remind yourself visuals aren't everything, and if you're not a graphical snob and you're not looking for the Unreal Engine 5 realism, and you don't mind the budget of hardworking people, this is more than serviceable for what it is. You cannot 
not let it end this way. Oh. And weapons. Oh, thinking about the weapons. The weapon design is great. And the weapons are what you'd expect. You've got the classic M1911. You've got the good old shotguns, submachine guns, AKs, revolvers and rifles. You've got melee weapons and some special big upgradable weapons as well. And it even features the upgradable station akin to the Pack-A-Punch from years before. The adaptive visuals, you know, it feel, feeds and feels into the power of each gun. And trust me, they do look and feel awesome. There is also some weapons to find, such as the Thunderbolt and the Crossbow and Axe and other things like that. Um, and I think for the 1.0 launch, there's actually some more things coming as well. I know they're doing some weapon naming votes as well, so keep an eye out. Then likely we're going to add more weapons in the future as well, if it's popular. Like I said, I'm pretty behind this game. The devs are great, the community is lovely, and it's an action horror game that I can actually get into, which is rare. But one thing you may miss is that classic mystery box. Now, obviously, they're not going to copy that across, even though it is pretty much a COD clone uh, in terms of the zombies aesthetic. There is a large improvement here of a lovely, friendly dog called Lucky, who will be your mystery box. He offers you random weapons. They can be good or bad. You know the drill there. But whoever's idea that was, please give them a raise or a treat. There are also perk stations dotted around the map in many locations, from health upgrades to speed boost to reload management, getting new weapons, all that kind of thing. Each round throws your basic possessed villager at you, or, you know, sometimes they're faster, stronger, or different abilities. One of my favourite is the deep sea diver with the beam. And they're all broken up with the elites coming to challenge you, like Bombers and even Abraham, the big tall boy in a lovely hat. You can't keep crawlers though, crawlers are not a thing here. And now why that was an exploit back in the COD days, you can't really do it in Scare Ritual, which, you know, could be seen as a positive or a negative. As you're killing the many enemies within Scare Ritual, you'll also be treated to pickups from max ammo, sudden death, triple points, half price, infinite ammo and more. You get the gist, and these all help alleviate the tension and reward you for the more enemies you kill. And it does bring joy to an old heart like mine to see these drops again. Even things like unlocking masks and character upgrades and customising the main menu. There's a load of things you can do here that I don't remember ever being able to do in Call of Duty. And like I said, the comparisons are going to keep coming in thick and fast with this. It's like PUBG and Fortnite. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of those things, but unfortunately... Call of Duty is really lacking in this department, and Scare Ritual has improved a lot that they should have. Now, to be clear, like I said, I'm coming from a biased point of view. I actually really like the devs. I think they've worked really hard on this. You know, as much as there's some problems with the game, I'm happy to talk about it on my channel with you guys, because I think this is a worthwhile investment. This isn't really a review or anything like that. It's not what we focus on here. But see it as like a void seal of approval and an overview of a passion project from great people rekindling old memories in their own horror franchise, essentially. Now, the game itself is great fun, but it is not without some odd, you know, bugs on occasion over the early access period and on the PS5 copy I did receive, which most of them have squashed. But... Mainly, I have a few gripes. Firstly, the field of view, or the FOV, and the hand placement is unnecessarily huge. I'm not sure if this is a technical limitation or a design point, but I brought this up with them before, and I think they're looking into doing something with this. I just think it's too big, to be honest. I think it just needs to be able to shrunk down. Fallout games seem to have this issue as well, and it's personal preference. It's also very dark. The game uh, does get very gloomy and foggy, and it's sometimes hard to see what is going on, so adjust your settings accordingly. If you're maybe visually impaired, you may need to get some extra assistance and accessibility implemented into the game. And lastly, there's a real lack of original soundtrack and music here. The general ambience isn't great, and it can dull the immersion a bit. It's nothing, you know, incredibly wrong, but... It's just little hang-ups that otherwise pull down a good game. 
I honestly believe, and this is why I wanted to showcase Scare Ritual on the channel, that we have a little cult cool hit on our hands here. It may not get the 100,000 players or top of the Steam charts, but it will be a bit success of its own. The community can keep this alive, and I think it's going to have a good boom when it releases, when this video drops. Hopefully I'm wrong, though, and the game blows up. Who knows? This, this world of Hell Divers 2 and Pal World blowing up the industry. It, it, you never know what can happen. Best of luck to them, I say. Again... Wales Interactive knew the source material here and knows what works. The entire story and lore is based on their own game franchise's DNA, not, you know, Celtic Welsh folklore. I would say it's important you play Made of Scare so you can get that story continuity and also see how it's evolved. But if you're just looking for a new zombies fix, it's not a deal breaker. At best, this is a continuation of Made of Scare in a completely new kind of gameplay mechanic and system. At worst, you'll see it as a COD ripoff, but you'll enjoy it. It's up to you what you get out of this. Like I said, we focus on a range of horror on the channel, and this is an action horror game, so don't expect survival horror like the previous Made of Scare. But it brought my attention back to that genre, and like I said, it has dark vibes. It doesn't reinvent the wheel by any means, but it does enough to be unique on its own merits. So yeah, that was like an overview of Scare Ritual. Thank you very much to Wales Interactive for the key and letting me check out the game and even test it early in their community. Like we all got a quick look at it to patch some quick last minute bugs. So like I said, if you're looking for a quick, cheap game and have some fun with your friends, I think this is great, especially if you're a horror fan or you're a fan of called zombies or you just like that kind of folklore aesthetic to games. It's the perfect mashup for you. Let me know what you thought to this video. It's a bit different to what else I've done on the channel so far. And if you like it or dislike it, let me know. Drop a comment. Are you going to buy this? Do you like the look of it? Are you already playing it? You know, all that good stuff. I like to know. I'll see you soon, guys, in a new video. Bye-bye. Go. Go now.